Now, one of the key events that shook the global economy in the year gone by was the Russia-Ukraine war that started earlier in 2022. And not only did it affect the global economy, but it equally hurt Kenyans so hard that many people had to dig deeper into their pockets to survive a day in the country. So how did events that unfolded in Eastern Europe affect an East African country over 5,000 miles away? NTV's Brian George Otieno explains. On 24th February 2022, the world woke up to news of Russia's invasion of its neighbor Ukraine. The following day, the Nairobi Securities Exchange lost investments worth 92 billion shillings as foreign investors who make up about 58% of investors at the bows were withdrawing capital. But that was not all. The Russia-Ukraine invasion effect was to cause far-reaching effects to Kenyans. Disruptions in value chains resulted in price increase in fuel and energy, wheat and fertilizer prices, which are critical inputs for Kenya's manufacturing and agricultural sector. Russia being the world's third largest producer of crude oil faced sanctions in its oil exports, creating a major shortage globally. Kenyans witnessed the highest ever fuel increase, with petrol retailing at 179 shillings per litre, up from 159 shillings in early September 2022. Diesel costs went to 165 shillings, up from 140 shillings, while kerosene retailed at 147 shillings at the time, in contrast to about 127.94 shillings previously. The shortage in fuel saw a once-in-a-lifetime phenomenon where Kenya's refuel stations totally lacked fuel. This equally impacted the cost of electricity as fuel charge on the end-user tariff went higher. We will be pushing for a reversal of the changes the UDA government made in 2022, which resulted in a steep rise in the cost of basic commodities, including petrol, diesel, paraffin, electricity and maize flour. These basic consumer items were subsidized under the previous administration. All this formed fodder for the just concluded August 8th Kenya general election with the then president Uhuru Kenyatta and his successor William Bruto, then deputy, trading vicious blows on the high cost of living and how the country got to such a precarious position that saw millions suffer starvation. <laughs> Sasa badala ya watu kushughulikia mafuta wanaanza mambo ya fitina ati wananipangia. Sasa muna nipangia nini? Pangieni mafuta kwanza iteremuke chini. Anza vita ambaye sisi hata hatuelewi. Ambaye imesababisha bei ya mafuta, bei ya vyakula kwa inchi zingine kupanda na kutuletea shida zingine. Na badala ya viongozi kuwa wanaketi kusema tutasuluhisha na mnagani jameni, tutasaidiana na mnagani, wengine wanaenda huko kuinsight wanainchi. Hei, angalia, hii, bei imepanda, uliza uhuru. Yani mimi uhuru niko Ukraine, mimi, mimi ninafanya nini huko, jameni. Another key sector that took a blow is the agricultural sector. Kenya imports wheat, oil, iron, steel and fertilizers from Russia and Ukraine. Now Russia and Ukraine dominate wheat imports in the East African region. In Kenya, for example, 67% of wheat is from Russia, 22% from Ukraine, and 11% from the rest of the world. Russia is the world's largest exporter of fertilizer and exports a significant volume of fertilizer to the East African region. Disruptions in fertilizer production and exportation caused a spike in the price of fertilizer in Kenya. In March 2022, the price of fertilizer doubled from the long rains planting season of March to April to May 2021 from 2,500 shillings to more than 5,000 Kenya shillings at the time. Our priority intervention, therefore, is to make fertilizer, good quality seed, and other agricultural inputs affordable. And available. The sanctions against Russia for the invasion had a direct impact on Kenya, with the disruption in trade of Kenya's main commodities. Flower farms in Kenya reduced production significantly because of depressed demand, and the tea sector was not spared either as Russian tea buyers kept off the auction following the announcement of the sanctions. 
the United Nations Development Program Kenya Chapter recommended the strengthening of social protection systems to protect fragile livelihoods following the advent of COVID-19 pandemic and seeking alternative exports markets for Kenya's coffee and tea. In this context, social protection would also mean inclusion of subsidies on key commodities and stimuli packages. However, this will not be possible as the International Monetary Fund has the country's news on tighter austerity measures, among them resting of subsidies, to channel tax revenues towards debt retirement. Brian Giotutino, NTV, Nairobi.